Hey Learning Birds, this is Mr. Ozarka with another lesson brought to you by LearningBird.com. If you have any questions about the following video, you can email me at mrozarka at gmail.com. All right, here we go. All right, this can be a video about identifying transformations in tessellations that are already made. So our already made tessellation is gonna be this colorful tessellation that I have right here. And I purposely kept it really simple just so this video is kind of easier to understand, but just know that you can make this tessellation as, as simple or as complicated as you want. So definitely experiment with this and try to, to do one to your needs. I'm just doing this to make it as easy as possible. Now, to make this tessellation, it's important to note that I used Google Slides. If you don't know what Google Slides is, you're gonna to wanna to Google that because uh, it's great, it's free. Um, as long as you have a Google account, you can kind of just use this to, uh, to make tessellations as well as any other slideshow. I'm just using this because it's got these great um, shapes that you can use here. If you click right here, it's just like, there's all these shapes that you can use. In this case, I just kind of used a, a parallelogram, as you can see, um, I just kept try, try to keep it simple. But um, you're gonna wanna use Google Slides for this and then just follow along with what I'm doing in, in this video, basically, to try to make tessellations of your own. Okay, so I kind of already made one right here. And again, this is gonna be just about identifying each transformation that's occurring in this tessellation. So the, the transformations that we're gonna be talking about in this video are translation, rotation, and reflection. Now translation just means sliding, and the other two you probably already heard of before, just think rotation, it just means spinning around, and reflection, just think like a mirror. So translation is probably the only real new vocab word here that you might not have seen before. It just means sliding though. So you're, you're taking a shape and you're sliding it from one place to another. That's all translation is. Okay, the first transformation that we're gonna talk about is translation. Again, it means sliding. So if I take this shape that I based all the other shapes off of here in this tessellation, you can see that if I made a shape right here and I wanted to slide it down, I could just slide it right here to make that other shape and then it slid right here as well and right here. I can't do this transformation to make this shape down here or this shape over here. As you can see, it just doesn't fit. So these, these top four, this, this red, orange, yellow, and green was all made by translation because it was just the sliding of this parallelogram from uh, from left to right here to make these shapes okay now you might be thinking how did i make all four of these here well the great thing about google slides is it makes it super easy to use this shape and manipulate it as well as recolor it so what i'm going to do here is what you could what you do is just copy and paste and then you have another shape so you can just kind of make those four shapes in a row just by copying and pasting another great thing about google slides is it actually lines it up for you too so if you move this over it kind of lines it up. You can see that red line, that means it's right in the middle of it, so it's perfectly lined up. And you can press left and right arrow here, um, or you can hold shift and press left and right to make it move a little bit less, to make it exactly where you want that shape to be. And then to, to recolor it, you can just go to this, this paint bucket right here, this fill color, and you can just pick whatever color you want, and that's the color that it would make that shape. Now, another thing you can do besides copying and pasting is you can just do a, a cloning of this. So if you hold option and then click so you hold option and click this right here and just drag off of it, it's gonna make another clone of that shape. So it's really easy to make two shapes right next to each other just like I did there, okay? So you can hold, click it, click the shape that you wanna make a clone of, hold option and then just drag and it automatically is gonna make another shape for you here. So that's translation, It's again, it's how I made the red, orange, yellow, and green here. So I'm gonna get rid of these because now I wanna talk about rotation. So you might be thinking, how did I make these other shapes here? Well. What you can do is you, if you have this shape, you can actually rotate it by clicking this little circle right here at the top of Google Slides. You can just rotate it like so and make a completely different shape um, or a completely different looking shape right here. So you can actually put, so put it right here like I did right here. So this, this, this right here, this part of the tessellation would be made by the rotation transformation. So I just rotated that shape I had until it, it looked like this, and I kind of noticed right here, okay, it fits right there. So this shape, this black shape right here, was made by rotating this parallelogram that we started with, okay? So that's, that's the rotation one. So now I'm gonna go over reflection there. We have this, uh, this shape right here, this magenta, as well as all of these four right here. So we're gonna actually need rotation and reflection to make those shapes, to identify those transformations. Um, and you can do that. It's important to know that all of these transformations right here can be mixed with each other. They can be used by themselves. You can mix two, you can mix three, you can mix them at different angles. So if you didn't wanna rotate um, exactly like I did, like, like, like where I rotated 90 degrees, you can rotate it exactly how many degrees you want. It even shows the little rotation degrees on the, uh, on the screen wherever, however you wanna rotate it, as you can see right there. 
So that's how to do with the rotation at different degrees. So now we need to make these other shapes. To do this, we're gonna use this reflection transformation first. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in Google Slides. It's a little bit more difficult, but still Google Slides makes it very easy. So to make a reflection, what I'm gonna do first is make a clone of this shape. So I have a clone right here. And what I'm gonna do next is I want to put this wherever I want the mirror image to show up. And I'm gonna put it a little bit lower just so it's kind of easier to see. So I'm gonna put this like, I'm gonna scoot this over and you'll notice that there's a, eventually a red line that gets formed right there, right there. And this is where I want my mirror to be. So if you want your mirror to be where that red line is, that's where it's gonna, that's where it's gonna, the mirror image is gonna be. So I'm gonna line that up. Now I purposely lined it up a little bit lower than, than the actual shape. Um, you could put it right, right next to it. I'm just doing it for the illustrative purposes here. So I'm just gonna put it a little bit lower right here. Okay, now that's where I want my mirror to be. So then what you do next is you're gonna grab this other side of that shape and I'm going to translate, I'm gonna move it, slide this all the way over here to the other side until it lines up with that other side and you'll see it kind of locks into place like that and then you end up with a shape that looks like an exact mirror image. So I'm gonna put this right back up here now and you can see that it's an exact mirror image acting like as if the mirror was right here of the shape that we started with. So now what I can do is take this piece and boom, now I have this piece, I have this piece, this piece, and this piece as well. And you can do the same thing where you're copying and pasting or just cloning. So I'm gonna put this piece here, I'm gonna put this piece here. I know these aren't exactly lined up, I'm just doing this for, for speed purposes to kind of show you, and that as well, okay? So that's how you do that with reflection. So that's how I make those these four, this cyan, this, this blue, this, this other blue right here, and this purple. That's how I made all those shapes was reflection. So the only shape we haven't made yet was this magenta here. Now this is kind of where it involves actually mixing of the transformation. So what I'm gonna do here is just simply rotate this so it looks just like this shape right here. I didn't rotate it exactly, but you can kind of get the idea that you would have to use reflection and rotation as the transformations to get this shape here. So you might be thinking, who cares about identifying transformations and tessellations? When am I ever gonna need this? You'll probably actually never really need this, but if you ever see a tessellation that you want to reproduce, it, it helps to know how that tessellation came to be to begin with. So if you can identify the transformations that are occurring in that tessellation, then that could help you make your tessellations a little bit easier as well. Okay, and again, tessellations are, are a great way to express yourself in an artistic way, um, and it, which is obviously a great way of, of stress relief as well as a great way of just, you know, expanding your brain and thinking uh, a little bit differently. So if you have any questions about identifying transformations and tessellations, let me know. And if you thought this lesson helped you, please be sure to click This Was Helpful. For other great lessons, be sure to check out learningbird.com.